you know, I'm running for the Colorado House. Yeah. And, I, and one of the things I'm trying to come up with is ideas for legislation that could be done at a state level that would advance the cause. Now, I don't think Colorado has much in the way of rare earth mines. Do you know what I mean? uh, Colorado definitely would. They, would? they mine a lot of uh, uh, commodities there. Uh -huh. and, and a lot of uh, the materials that you mine would have trace yeah. elements or recoverable levels of rare earth. So. Uh, what about thorium? Are they heavy? Uh, yeah, for sure. You're well. You guys are mining copper, silver, gold. Uh -huh. uh, um, you know, you, I think you have some small molybdenum mines, like oh, one. Yeah, molybdenum. It's a big one. Right. Uh, Ajax. Ajax. All, all of that yeah. stuff. They're all going to have recoverable okay. levels of rare earths. The thorium may or may not be a problem with those particular uh, resources, but the thing is, they're there. And currently, you know, for one reason or another, they're mostly just discarded as waste. Could the state set, set up their own thorium to repository? No, no, they can't. State license? We, we looked at that because That's Missouri happens to be a very unique non-signatory state. Uh -huh. So they would have a tremendous amount of flexibility and they just can't, can't do it. They can't do it. Even, uh, could, couldn't they apply for a federal license and with the power of the state behind them? So the, the problem leverage? with the federal license uh -huh. is the federal license, uh, they're for two things, possession, uh -huh. right? And the other one is a mill. The intention with the mill is you're, you're grinding, you know, upgrading, concentrating and selling. Uh -huh. Possession is you're probably the intermediary selling, right? Okay. So those are transaction oriented permits. And for thorium, because there's no meaningful commercial uses at the time, what you are is essentially Storage. a repository. Yeah. And there's no license for that. And there's a problem because if that stuff sits there for long enough, when is it when can, when is it no longer feasible to claim you're storing a material for sale that you can't sell? Uh -huh. And when that occurs, you're admitting what you have is nuclear waste. When you have nuclear waste, you're That's in trouble. Huh. Right, so so you can apply for NRC permits, which are designed around the the production of uranium for energy, or the production of something else for weapons use. Okay, all of the weapons use stuff happens at such a high level, and you know I don't think there you can get. A, I mean, whoever is doing it is doing it. Nobody else is going in the game. The old videos, Kirk says, I got a friend who's trying to open up the yeah. mine. So is that the mine you're opening up? The mine that we own is an iron ore mine, and there are three deposits associated with it. One is a tremendous, super high value rare earth sitting in the Tailings Lake. Hmm. It's 40 years of accumulated mining waste. The 120,000 tons of rare earth sitting there happen to be of a distribution that is uniquely valuable. Hmm. We have lots of the heavy rare earths required to make high temperature magnets. Cool. Okay. So it's the best stuff in the world. And for some reason, nature did something really wonderful here. I've got lots of heavy rare earths and the thorium in the tailings lake is very far below threshold levels. It's so far below threshold levels I can concentrate it and still not exceed threshold levels. So for the tailings lake, we can put the entire thing into production and start selling rare earths. Okay, Jim, why don't you do that? Who, who, to who would you sell them? Thank the you very much. So right now, the only a final buyer of that material would be China. So we are trying to put together a series of commercial scale, commercial proven joint venture partners so that we can pass the material off through a domestic value chain and end up with fabricated high temperature rare earth magnets. The other two deposits are the same waste, what, what was considered a waste material inside the iron ore. So when you go back underground and you start mining iron again, the waste stream coming off that will include that same rare earth that's high in heavy rare earths and very low in thorium. That's all positive. The most famous rare earth deposit associated with our mine is breccia pipes that contain a monazite and the thorium sitting in the ground is far, far above threshold. So for the most uh, noted uh, uh, resource at Pea Ridge, it all exceeds threshold. Until we're able to push through a new regulatory uh, uh, structure 
for storing thorium, uh, managing thorium, uh, we got a real problem on our hands. Right? We're just like, you know, it, for it, that one resource, you have resources you can monetize. Oh, for sure. And, and you're saying, but you have a resource where if you want to supply the world with thorium for energy, you could, but you are not going to exploit that resource because of the complications of thorium. So when we op so when we do the tailings project, which hopefully is in the next 12 months, we get it started. Uh, that project alone, if we line up all the JV players, yeah. we could we could far exceed. U.S. demand for rare earth magnets, 100%. Um, but that resource is about a 10-year resource. So no one's building a value chain for a 10-year resource. It's suicide. The resource that's in the iron as we go in and produce the iron, it's going to have a very slow, steady, low rate of production. We can only produce as much byproduct. It will be a function of how much iron we, we make. Right? We have a fixed iron schedule, so we can't control the production rate on the rare earths. So what we really do need is to be able to balance it against the high thoriated deposit. Um, and there are other strategies. So, it, you know, in fact, if we built a vertically integrated supply chain by being able to make a credible promise that we have 40, 50, 100 years of resource, problem solved. Uh, in the absence of that, uh, and part of our strategy is that as we get that value chain built on the apparent long-term availability, it will be the only downstream value chain outside of China's control. So anybody else in the business of mining rare earths could pass material through. So we can still hit very, very high production numbers, but um, it, 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 you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, being in a foot race and you've got to tie one of your feet in a gunny sack. I don't know. It's just, it's just not how you do things, right? How do you convince a group of companies yeah. to invest the equivalent of $3 billion for a short-lived resource? You just can't, right? Yeah. And there's nobody else that can do it because there is not another permitted mine, not under China's control, that can deliver the high-value heavy rare earths doesn't exist so it's us or nobody uh, we're doing our best but uh, the thorium thing the problem kicks in for us in let's say year seven year eight after you've kind of accumulated yeah, as we're as we're running the under as we're cleaning up the tails and getting to the end of that and we're underground and we start producing iron ore again we're going to get a little bit of that feedstock flowing slow and steady but we really do need more material to replace the tailings that we're going to exhaust.